In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who in this season give your church the grace to imitate devoutly the Blessed Virgin Mary in contemplating the passion of Christ, Grant, we pray, through her intercession, that we may cling more firmly each day to your only begotten Son, and come at last to the fullness of his grace, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting and unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and he heard my voice. I love you, O Lord, my strength, O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. The breakers of deaths surged round about me. The destroying floods overwhelmed me. The cords of the netherworld enmeshed me. The snares of death overtook me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and I cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life, 
you have the words of everlasting life. Glory to you, word of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews picked up rocks to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are God's? If it calls them gods to whom the word of God came and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, Believe the works, so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Then they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performed no sign. But everything John said about this man was true. And many there began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the puzzling things about reading the prophets is that each of them uh, endured this great persecution. And though they call out to the Lord, none of them were saved from death. None of them were saved from persecution. And it is, it is interesting or it, it, you know, a wonderful statement of faith, I believe, on the part of the prophet Jeremiah to say that he called out to the Lord and the Lord heard him. The Lord heard what what he had to say and he praises the lord even though he has to undergo all of this suffering and eventually be killed he still believes so often we turn to the lord and we ask the lord for help and when it is according to his will he provides it and we've seen miracles happen There are other times when he does not seem to respond, or at least not in the way that we thought, or the way that we expected him to do. But we are called, especially in those times, to trust in the Lord and to trust that he has a plan, even though it may still involve our own suffering, even though we will not be saved from what it is we uh, we are asking the Lord to remove from us, to. Uh, take away from us. Jesus, of course, is the best example of this, that he gives willingly into the unjust suffering. In the gospel today, he's telling them, I've done all of these good things. Why do you want to get rid of me? Why do you want to stone me? And they say blasphemy, and he tries to explain to them that if he's doing all of these good things, they should at least believe in the good things that he's doing, But also, if he's doing all of these things that are so good, they must be coming from God. And he is working as God in doing this. He's fulfilling the Father's will in all of this. And so they should put their trust in him. They should trust that he, when he says he is the Son of God, he is. He indeed is. But they're not willing to accept this. They can't imagine it. And it's one of the one of the paradoxes, I think, of faith, one of the difficult things of faith is that we often find ourselves in a situation where the thing that we are asked to believe is something that we do not understand. 
And that's a tough one. It's easy to believe in things that we understand, but it's much harder to believe in things that, that we cannot comprehend, like the fact that God is three persons. We accept it so easily. We make the sign of the cross so easily. We do that, but it is, uh-oh, maybe it's time for me to stop talking. There we go, it's good. Okay, um, so uh, it, is, it is difficult for us when we, when we um, have something that we don't really understand and are called to believe in it. One of the things I have to remind people when they're in RCIA is the process of RCIA is not for you to examine all of the teachings of the church and in coming to an understanding of them, you decide that you're going to believe in them. Faith comes first, and that faith always challenges us beyond what we understand. It challenges us to believe in more than we can comprehend. One of the things that, will, that always seems to hit, hit me, and I imagine it, it uh, is something that, that you experience as well, is that we go through, next week we'll go through the Paschal Triduum and we'll see this unjust suffering and death unfold before us. And it's like the, really the death of anyone. There's always that question, why? It's not really a question that we want answered though. It's just that we see something like this and it just is too much for us to really take in and to really comprehend. Why did Jesus have to die for us? Well, I'll tell you more about that next week as we celebrate those liturgies, and we'll talk more about that. But again, our faith does call us to go beyond what we understand and to believe these truths about our Lord, to believe these things, uh, even that we don't understand, to to accept them because they are given to us not by men, not by something that someone concocted, someone dreamed up and thought it was a good idea. No, they come to us by revelation through sacred scripture, God speaking to us and telling us what he is like and what he does and who he is revealed so clearly and so completely in Jesus. So may we accept that challenge of faith then today and, and be willing to accept those things that we don't understand, but to trust that the Lord is being truthful to us and to trust that he takes care of us and will take care of us. As we take Jesus in, in the Eucharist, again, a great mystery we don't fully understand. We don't really understand completely how this could be, but we say that amen and we believe and let that be, uh, if you will, a stepping stone or, a, or a, uh, an opportunity in this whole process of accepting all that the church believes and teaches. So let's pray. Oh, so many people to pray for, but we want to pray for the Ukraine first. We want to pray for um, peace to be established there, a, a just and lasting peace. We pray to the Lord. We continue our prayers for our, the, some, some of our homebounds uh, that are in particular need. Joe Lusk, Carolyn Maddox, Gail Powell, Marianne Morris, Felicita Mandragon, uh, Rosendo Sacinto, Antonio Pacheco and Herman de Santiago. We pray to the Lord. And uh, uh, special prayers for, um, uh, for healing for Bernie Mendiando, uh, Diamond Dvorak, and Susan Harrelson. We pray to the Lord. And uh, we continue our prayers for healing for Marie and Bob and Marge Ray for Trisha Farrow, Mercedes Bastardo, Edna Briggs, Reina Garcia Gonzalez, uh, Gretchen, Gordon Jones, Deetta, Sandra Goodwin, Kate Branford, Lisa Trent, Madison Placencia, Margot Bombard, and Craig Bunting. We pray to the Lord. 
we offer the Mass today for the happy repose of the soul of Norma Evans. We pray to the Lord. Um, any other prayers you'd like to offer? <clears throat> Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, you are unafraid in the face of evil and have shown that you boldly pursue the liberation of those who suffer. Embolden us amid whatever anger, discomfort, and danger we face to pursue uh, liberative choices that reveal your goodness and the grace of freedom. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O merciful God, that we may be worthy to serve ever fittingly at your altars and there to be saved by constant participation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the unfailing protection of the sacrifice we have received never leave us, O Lord, and may it always drive far from us all that would do us harm. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servants who seek the grace of your protection may be free from every evil and serve you in peace of mind. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.